Yeah. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the ASPO March board meeting. Uh, we were just coming out of executive session and have established a quorum. So before we move forward, um, I'd like to put the uh, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Secretary, the uh, approval of the, uh, the meeting minutes from the February 4th meeting. So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Good to go. Thank you. Before we get started, um, I wanted to go over an issue that has come to our attention multiple times. So much so that we created a task force last year to look into it, uh, the Leaf Blower Task Force. We tabled it then, uh, wanted to take some more time, and I've spent the, fast, the past few weeks diving deeper into the noise pollution issue. It was actually pretty fascinating, um, especially for us here in Sea Pines. I'm sure I don't need to remind any of us listening in that we are one of the first environmentally sensitive residential communities that was ever developed. And the first thing I took a look at is, is there any existing noise regulation? I kind of started at the top, which uh, is nationally and the Environmental Protection Agency. And obviously their mission is to protect our environment. The EPA does regulate noise, but only in the commercial arena. Um, they have delegated the regulation of residential noise pollution to the states. So the next step was to go to the state of South Carolina, where responsibility lays with DHEC, the Department of Health and Environmental Control. And it turns out that they have delegated the regulation to the counties. Um, I got that from our state uh, house representative. So I looked at Buford County and I spoke with Stu Rodman and uh, our county council representative. And he tells me that whatever the Buford County Council does, it, it applies only to unincorporated Buford County. So Sea Pines is excluded. So next I went and talked to Tom Lennox, our councilman for the town of Hilton Head. And he confirmed that the town does indeed have a residential noise ordinance and it prohibited are noise levels that are greater than 95 decibels from your property line and landscape work prior to 7 a.m. and after 10 p.m. To put that in perspective, the CDC says that 95 decibel noise is equivalent to the noise that comes from a motorcycle um, or the noise from a subway train at 200 feet or a jackhammer. Now, on a personal note, I happen to be living with a jackhammer right now in my house. We're getting tile removed from our bathroom for a renovation. And I can't begin to tell you how stinking loud that jackhammer is. Personal, you know, personal test here. Um, when you think about that, I, it's compounded by the fact that WebMD says that hearing damage begins at 85 decibels. <clears throat> so moving on down the food chain, um, we looked at CSA, I looked at CSA, and they have not created any ordinances for residential noise. I understand that they address commercial noise through vendor contracts that they let. So if we step back for a minute and we look at the situation that we're in, um, I would describe it as living in an environmentally sensitive community with no ordinances against residential no noise. It seems like wildlife gets more respect here and they don't make any noise. Um, while the noise, the, the, the noise that comes from leaf blowers is between 106 and 115 decibels. As I mentioned before, hearing damage begins at 85 decibels. So those are just the facts uh, that I put together. The task force um, worked a lot on the nuisance effect 
which is what we hear from the property owners. And every single day, without exception, commercial vendors are using leaf blowers to rearrange the leaves, uh, move the pine needles, um, and no matter whether you're on the phone, um, listening to TV, um, or the dog is barking, um, I'm sorry, protecting you, the activity is drowned out by the loud noise. On Governor's Road, neighboring homes, um, there are four neighboring homes. I mean, this is just in immediate vicinity that have commercial lawn maintenance. One is done on Tuesday, one is on Wednesday, one is on Thursday, and the last one's on Saturday at 7.30 in the morning. I'm guessing this is playing out across all of our neighborhoods too. And I, I have to say, this is truly a shame. Um, and it just, it doesn't have to be this way. Why are we suffering? Maybe a few years ago, I would say the status quo was the status quo and we had to, but that's just not the case today. Um, technology, and again, the task force has put together some terrific information on technology has advanced so quickly and so successfully that today's gas powered leaf blowers can operate at the preferred 65 decibel lower noise level. And those are the, 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 the big honking gas blowers. Um, and clearly electric and battery powered blowers operate at the lower noise levels. That's a lot of numbers that I threw out um, when we send out our email uh, next month. I'll put some charts in there and stuff so that you can visualize what, what I just uh, mentioned. So I believe it's past time for ASPO to delve deeper into this situation. We need to understand better the attitudes of our members. In the next email, we will include a survey to understand how you feel about this topic and your response will help any future activity. I also encourage you, um, all of you uh, who are not receiving our emails, it's because we don't have your email. So if you could go to ASPO.net Go to your account and update your email. It would be terrific. We're your voice. We advocate for you and we need your input. We're not always going to agree on everything. I can guarantee that, but I can guarantee also that we read everything that comes in. By the way, um, we did on the email that we sent out last month, um, we ran a survey and we asked if you agreed or disagreed with this statement. Uh, quote, it is time to reduce the 75% majority vote required by our covenants to make any major changes. The response was 70% of you agreed and 30% disagreed. This is excellent directional input from membership to enable us to fairly represent you, and I hope it continues. So, on with the meeting. Mr. Treasurer, do you have a financial update? Grover. I'm sorry, Lee. Yeah, um, just following up on some of your comments, has, um, in addition to the leaf blowers, um, trash trucks are of a similar um, issue with the noise and the fact that they're in neighborhoods every day of the week. Has there been any thought given to, as part of the solution to the problem to be discussed, dividing sea pines into quadrants and only allowing um, work being done on the day assigned to that quadrant. So therefore you would only have landscapers on a Monday in quadrant one as an example and trash trucks there on. So you're not, I, I mean, I get, I get trash trucks coming by my house every day of the week, except Sunday and leaf blower is the same. If they could be confined to a day of the week or two days of the week, it would be a lot less um, noisy and disruptive just as a, a thought. Grover is chairman of the task force and duly noted. Yeah, I, I think that is a, a, an interesting topic. I think the uh, what the, the leaf blower task force has discovered in, with uh, determining who all is, is already implementing similar strategies, um, what does our community really uh, want based on the 
the residents that are speaking out um, against the noise and complaining about it. Um, it's, it's a big task. It doesn't sound like it is, but it's a big task yep. to come up with a recommendation just for leaf blower noise and who that applies to who it doesn't. So I would suggest that a um, let's get through this particular initiative and then create a task force for what you're talking about, because again, it's, it's always a bigger deal than you think when you dive into the details. Yeah, I guess my point was that even if you couldn't reduce the decibel level, which, which I'm in favor of, of doing, um, if you could re reduce the frequency of when you have to listen to that noise uh, would be beneficial as well. Yeah, that's a point of discussion, I, I guess, within a task team and um, the burden that would that would put on the, the landscapers and their scheduling. And, and I'm sure they could, but it's, it's a topic we, we, we have not discussed. Okay, thanks. Grover, would you, uh, did you have a, any financial report? I know we've gone to quarterly updates. Yeah, just as a reminder, we are uh, reporting financials quarterly. And March. So um, as soon as they get January, February, and March complete, uh, we'll have a, a quarter's uh, report, and uh, we'll report that in the May, which is our next meeting in our, in our May um, board meeting. Um, but just as a note, um, uh, through uh, the month of February, which is the data that we've been supplied thus far, uh, we had collected $95,960 in dues for ASPO from, from our residents. And this year, we have collected $157,274. Um, so a substantial increase in the amount of dues. And of course, the dues did go up from $35 to, to $50. So that's in those numbers. We've also collected Thus far, 1,755 emails uh, from those who are members of, of ASPO, and we're somewhat on a campaign to try to get 100% emails of, of those who are members so that we can um, communicate um, as digitally as most communication is these days. So we've had over 3,000, I think it's 3,064 uh, residents thus far pay their dues through February. And um, if it trends like last year, that will continue to increase as, as we go forward. Thank you very much, Grover. Um, for ASPO updates, um, Greg, do you have an update for communications and website? I do, thank oh, okay. you. <clears throat> Uh, first, I'd like to say the February newsletter was, uh, a, I think, a success. We had good res good readership. We had 82% uh, of the people who received the, the uh, newsletter electronically opened the email. Um, the system can track whether folks uh, open that from a laptop or from a mobile device, and it looks like we're uh, a community that li loves our laptops, about 60% uh, opened there. Um, and we're going to continue to work on ways to get emails as Grover said. Um, and, uh, so please, uh, if you haven't signed up, please go to the, uh, website and give us your, your email there. Um, we're going to continue to conduct surveys with, uh, uh, with our monthly, um, updates and, uh, Hope people will enjoy that and and respond. Um, the other topic that's important is uh, proxies are are going out. They may be out as we speak um, for the annual meeting. The date of that uh, date of record for the meeting is March the eighth. So if you were a member as of March the eighth, you can vote. Uh, we need your proxies. They're important. Um, we need to establish a quorum in order to have our annual meeting, and that is a 20% uh, threshold. So please, when you get the proxy statement, uh, fill it out. There's an opportunity again for you to give us your email, so please do that. And um, 
if you don't get a proxy, please uh, let us know and we will uh, follow up and make sure you, that you get one. Um, that's it for the communications committee. Thank you. Um, one of the updates that we did on the website and you've heard us heard a lot of us talk about it was the um, ability to handle credit card transactions. Um, really hoping for a shift uh, for our membership from manual checks to credit cards. It would save tremendously in our overhead and would be a huge convenience for members. You can go on automatic renewal if you want to. Um, of the members, let's see, we've got over 3,000 members at this point. And if you go back and you look at how they paid, um, 418, I believe, is the number that used credit card. So we, we, we communicated, we communicated on social media and our newsletters in the bill, um, but I think habits are very hard to break. So uh, while it's a communications challenge, we might also need to look at something like reducing the options of how you pay for your membership as well. Uh, Lee, membership committee update. Um, yeah, so uh, during the executive session, I presented names to the um, to the board um, of volunteers for the membership uh, committee. Do you want me to go through those names now? Yes, please. Okay. So the following eight people um, I've spoken with and have volunteered to serve on the membership committee. I'll remind everybody that the makeup of the committee is to be um, a third full-time residents, um, a third part-time residents that do not rent their homes, and a third part-time residents that do rent their homes. So we get a cross-section of input from throughout the community. And the names I have so far with one opening remaining are John Hall, Lori Allenbach, Janice Nieren bell Mark James, Fritz Smith, Edward Lowe, Patricia Bauernhuber, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and Bill Bartholomew. Thank you very much. Um, Leaf Blower Task Force, Grover, do you have anything to add uh, to my opening remarks? I think you covered it very well. Okay. Um, we um, do plan to bring a recommendation at our next board meeting. Um, and I think we uh, have been and will be very thorough as far as specs of uh, what's available out there uh, for landscapers, um, what type commercial um, companies should be covered under this, and really have our uh, ear to the ground as far as what the residents really want out of this recommendation. That's our goal, and uh, again, we'll bring that recommendation in the next meeting. Thank you very much. Um, Covenant uh, Task Force, we had, let's see, I think it was about six volunteers. I've been in communication with them, um, haven't met them. I will bring the names to the next uh, board meeting. We are looking to schedule our first meeting for the end of the second or fourth week in April, and we can set about uh, a, a course of action and I will report back out in May. Uh, Dana, the Joint CSA ASPA Land Use Management Committee. Committee continues to meet on a monthly basis. We review the uh, land use uh, violations with Ryan Cash and discuss any kind of issues within the community that we may be able to provide input on. In your board meeting packet, there's a land use management report provided by Ryan Cash that is current through this, for this year, current through March 16th, listing the violations that are active, resolved, and in committee that seem to be stalled. Those same committee properties of nine have been in that list for a very long time. So that list continues to be frustrating for the 45 to 50 neighborhoods that surround those properties. As far as um, the land use rules that ASPO board um, recommended to be refreshed to the CSA board, 
Um, since our last committee meeting, there have been, to my understanding, multiple small CSA uh, meetings, as well as a CSA board meeting to discuss those. Um, officially, I've not been given any information and if I was never invited, despite the fact that it's a joint committee. I'm the co-chair of the committee and I'm the subject matter expert. So that ends my summary. Did you have an update on um, the lawsuit? Any public information on, on that? I haven't been given any official information on that. Okay, well, we'll make it official and we'll bring it back in May. Thank you. My understanding, um, and again, this is not uh, formal information, but CSA has a board meeting coming up and I believe that the land use rules are on the agenda. So I think that uh, all of the work and the blood, sweat and tears and the, the, the years that have gone behind this um, will finally be rewarded for all of the residents of Sea Pines. And I'd like to thank Dana again for the incredible work that she has put into it. It is, it is just remarkable, the number of hours. It's so. been a team effort, but we'll see. Since the team hasn't been informed, we'll see. Hopefully it's fine. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, the CSA Short-Term Rental Committee, um, Dave Ellis, update. I think the main thing that you probably you probably can guess is from the traffic and the number of bikes and cars that you see here. Um, the short-term rentals have been virtually 100% uh, almost since last May 15 when this, the, the county opened up and you know, allowed us to start renting again. It's so packed that it's very difficult for somebody to find a place if they haven't already gotten it. And uh, I understand that from uh, listening to rental managers and, and property owners who rent that um, uh, not only is there demand, but they're again, once again, able to raise their prices for you know, the, the, the same property. And uh, I, it appears that that's gonna continue uh, at least through the summer season and September, how long it goes after that, but it's been very unusual um, and, and, and it, Everybody's guess is it's pandemic related, and um, and stuff. So it's uh, it's unusual from previous situations. That's really all I have. Unless anybody has any questions. Thank you, Dave. Um, you know that you were talking about how packed it is, and I, I just it reminded me of a headline I saw, um, just in real estate in general, is that right now there are more real estate agents than there are properties for sale. I mean, that's a staggering thought, but anyway. Um, Architectural Review Board, uh, Lee is going to give us an update. Uh, we have received uh, multiple pushback uh, emails regarding the painting that was done in Harbortown. Uh, I, I keep seeing it referred to as the Portofino uh, color style. And I, I'm asking Lee to just bring us up to date on why, how it got there, you know, what, what were we thinking? Um, these are the questions that a ASPO has been receiving. Thank you, Lee. Sure, um, in the packet was your regular ARB update. I'll start with that. Um, nothing staggering there, but uh, those are the figures through uh, February with uh, 10 new single family residences uh, 18 major uh, additions, alterations, 158 small ones, 10 pools. And, and I would tell you that we're seeing pools pop up all over Sea Pines. So just like we're seeing rentals, the pools are coming along with them because the owners are being told by their eight real estate agents that they can get more money if they have a pool. Um, commercial, eight new lots that were improved, four and um, two, uh, two demos of properties uh, to be replaced. On the topic of... Um, of the painting in Harbor Town, um, there's been a, a lot of uh, chatter on on social media about that. Um, those colors were approved by ARB um, because of some of the chatter that that's been heard. There was been ongoing discussion 
with that regime. And I believe one of the colors, the yellow, is being toned down slightly. All the rest are approved. Um, people will need to understand that um, Harbor Town's a special district. So um, there's some of the chatter is people are saying, well, I guess we're going to see those colors all over Sea Pines. No, you're not. Um, Harbor Town is special district. That was the vision of uh, Charles Frazier for that to be a Portofino type of port. <clears throat> and um, I'm hoping that it'll die down. The other thing I would suggest as, as a member of the ARB, we've discussed it is that even though we've had more comments on, on those colors than we've had on other projects, the number of comments is still very small compared with the number of people that, that own in, in sea pines. Um, and we just have to be careful that um, we don't listen to the loudest voices um, because typically you hear from people who don't like something as opposed to hearing from people who do like something. And, let and me, Bill let Johnson me. lives in that, uh, if he has a comment he'd like to add, I think that would be sure. I, I've got several comments. First of all, I'm the president, I'm the president of Schooner Court number 30 and we're the regime that, that um, uh, is, is being talked about. And, and Paula, I wish you would have talked to me prior to this. Um, Ap apologies. Uh, this subject up. Uh, let me give you some background. First, there are 21 owners in Schooner Court. Uh, Schooner, when it was developed in the late 60s, uh, originally was painted with a four uh, color palette, uh, individual units. Um, as of the last 20 years, Schooner was painted a basic beige. Uh, I, I often compare it to an army barracks. Um, when two years ago, we reached out to some prominent architects uh, in Sea Pines. We reached out to our 21 owners. We, we appointed a painting chairman uh, we started with 50 colors, 50. And we, in, through a series of elimination, narrowed it down to four. We went to the ARB with a submittal, which was approved with these base colors with a different accent color. The town of Hilton's Head came to us and said, the, the uh, DRB, and said, we have jurisdiction because you're within 500 feet of the water. And so we started the whole process over again with the design review board. They came back with their changes. We took an approval. We, we sent them back to ARB and we began our process. Certainly it's different than what people have seen in Sea Pines. Um, we're a waterfront tourist destination community in Harbor Town. We should be treated differently. These colors, as Lee said, they wouldn't work on governors or, or any other non-waterfront uh, area, but Harbor Town is a fun place. We should have fun colors. And we're very happy with our colors. ARB has come to us and asked if we would consider toning down one of the colors, the yellow, and there's been no agreement uh, on that, the conversation is ongoing, but we're happy with the contribution that we've made to Harbor Town as a whole. And uh, for for every negative comment that's been um, submitted to either the ARB or I assume I I'm not aware of it what what's been received, but uh, with ASPO, uh, we've received multiple, multiple, multiple positive comments. And there've been multiple positive comments on social media as of late. It's almost as if the tide has turned. But I will tell you, Harbor Town is a different community than it was 20 years ago. It's changing. It's a waterfront community and it's a fun community. And I think these colors represent that. Uh, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Great. Uh, Bill, I, I would, uh... You know, Charles Frazier, his vision for <laughs> as a whole has often comes up anytime there's any changes or, or, or whatever. Um, can you speak to uh, Charles Frazier's vision for this area particularly? Well, I didn't know Charles Frazier, but from what I've read, his vision when he developed the Yacht Basin was based upon a trip that he took to Italy to Portofino. We weren't trying to replicate Portofino colors per se, 
we were trying to eject color. We weren't trying to replicate Rainbow Row in, uh, in Charleston, although we've been compared with, with that also. We basically were looking to create a palette of a blue, a beige, green, and yellow to identify, to more identify um, uh, the individual units and create a more, uh, uh, less industrial appearance than what we'd had prior. Dave. Which fit right in with Charles Sorry. Fraser's vision. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, I, I yeah. think. Let, let me add a positive note. I think it brightens the place, makes it happy. Immediately when I went there, instead of looking at one drab coat, I said, oh, this is a fun place now. And just what you said. And I know people are not going to like it, you know, but it's not going to be where the homes are and, you know, to blend in. But I think it is brightens it and makes it a lively place, and that's what you know. I would think you would want for Harbor Town as a tourist destination. So I'm going to come in and join with the side of the people that like it. Barry, yeah, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, and I've told Bill this, you know, sometime a few weeks ago. Um, but I guess I'd also like to thank Bill, um, you know, for giving the history of exactly what took place and that the regulatory obligations that we have in terms of design and compliance all took place. You know, and I think this really just falls into the whole issue of what's factual versus what's not factual and in prevalent in, you know, in chit chat or in social media. And I just think it's really important on some of these issues where everybody just jumps in to get the facts and lay the facts out. I think both with ARB and, CR and CSA, I think both organizations right now are doing our best to encourage residents. And again, it's a small majority, but to get the facts from the people that oversee um, the issue involved. And I just, I thank Bill for stepping up, um, you know, and just kind of indicating you know, what their um, regime did and how they went about it. Thanks. Thank you, Barry. Um, I guess my feeling is, uh, and I apologize, Bill, if you feel like you're being put on the defensive. Um, I think if I could sort of restate this situation, um, the comments that I saw sort of went in one general direction. One, complete surprise, just all of a sudden the colors were there. And then uh, as people are wont to do, in the in absence of information in a vacuum, they'll fill it with themselves. And I think that they were concerned that this would continue throughout sea pines, like this was uh, the tip of the iceberg, what's gonna happen? Um, have we lost all control? And so I would suggest that it is a result of just not knowing what was what 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 the true story is behind it. Your story is fabulous, and I love the idea of a fun environment. And on the email that we will send out, this story will be there. Um, I think it would have been nice if CSA uh, or ARB in this case had published the story to say, look for it, get people excited about it. Um, just human nature, people hate change. You know, I, I, I just, we're, we're learning that 400 stinking credit card transactions out of 3000, hate change. <laughs> well, you know, Paula, I know very few communities where when someone decides to paint their house, they feel compelled to, to alert the entire um, 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 uh, group or uh, in the entire community. I, I, I just, I, I th personally, I thought it was a fun thing to do. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I think people, if they're really that concerned about colors in Harbor Town in, in uh, Schooner Court, what, you know, we must not have a whole lot of real serious or significant issues um, uh, in Sea Pines because that to me shouldn't be a blip on the radar. Well, apparently it was a blip. So, um, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I guess. It's e it, hindsight's easy, you know. It's the forward thinking that's hard. So y'all did a great job. 
Paul. This is a quick question to Bill. The four color palette, what was it originally? Similar to what you've done now? It was a more muted color, certainly, uh, but the, it was it was from the photographs I've seen. It uh, it had a uh, uh, it was four distinct colors. And, right. and to be with you, Paul, I can't remember uh, what that was. Schooner, actually, Schooner, the, the the first row of Schooner, the one closest to the lighthouse, that was probably the first structure that was built in the Harbor Town area, mm -hmm. prior to the shops, prior to the uh, yacht club. Certainly, prior to um, uh, the uh, lighthouse itself, uh, it was just basically a sand lot uh, uh, that was here. Well, for um, what it's worth, I always thought you had a fun place, regardless of the color of the outside. So, well, I appreciate yeah. that, but I'll tell you too. Um, out of our twenty-one units, we've invested in the last fifteen years <laughs> close to ten million dollars in in capital improvement. Oh, yeah. And that's a lot of money for a 21 unit regime. Uh, uh, we have 40% um, uh, of our units have added additional floors. Others have taken and totally gutted their units and, and put hundreds of thousands of dollars in. We totally did our infrastructure underground. We totally redid our, our we took out all the old tabby and blacktop and put in perverous uh, pavers that were more environmentally sound and plus much more attractive from a street standpoint. Yeah. We redid all, we took out all of our old lighting. Uh, our I mean, home, look, not, I don't want to demean Home Depot, but cheap $50 fixtures and put in $400 fixtures. I mean, we've put a lot of money into Schooner and our prices have, uh, and valuations have, are, reflect that. Uh, these yeah, properties now are worth significant, significant amounts of money. Yeah. No question about it. Anybody that goes down there and looks sees the fast improvement. Thank you, Paul. Um, Lee? Yeah, just to close out the, the conversation from the ARB perspective, not specifically to Schooner Court, but the, the question of why doesn't it, didn't ARB communicate this to the community? Um, that's not ARB's role. ARB's role is to look at uh, requests and approve or disapprove them and provide feedback to the individual owners or regimes and uh, just to remind everybody that the agenda uh, of every ARB meeting is published at the end of every week for the following week. And the results of the ARB meeting are published every week on the CSA website for people to see whether those projects were approved or not approved. So it's not being done in secret. <laughs> uh, it's available for anybody who wants to look, look for it. And, and um, there's very few people I think that, that actually go look for those things, but just letting everybody know that it's available if people want to know. Thank you very much. Uh, next on the agenda is unfinished business. I, I have nothing there. Does anyone else have anything unfinished? Um, new business. We have uh, an appointment of a nominating committee. Um, I would like to present the names of Lee Stevens. Barry Barth and myself to comprise the nominating committee for this year, 2021. And I will put this resolution up for approval. Um, resolve the Association of Sea Pines Plantation Property Owners and the Advisory Board approves the nominating committee 2021 as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. The annual meeting, if you haven't um, marked your calendars, is May 3rd at 10 a.m. It will be, we, uh, com because we're talking pretty much to the same target audience, we have combined forces with CSA for this. It, um, at 10 a.m., uh, CSA will determine a quorum. We will and then uh, withdraw. ASPO will conduct their meeting. It's probably 20, 30 minutes maximum. Then CSA will continue with theirs and close it out. I think that's all I have. Does anyone have anything else? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Adjourn. Sure. Second? Thank you. We're gonna take about a five minute break and I'll check and see if any questions have come in um, for the board to answer. If you all wanna take a five minute break. Thank you.
Here we go. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody's back. There were no questions. So uh, the meeting is adjourned and thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you for your hard work, Paula. <laughs>